G'day guys, welcome back. We're gonna finish us bigger than this step. So I'm bloody excited, I'm sure you're excited. So let's get into it. But before we do that, we're gonna have a little discussion about some of the things that we're gonna be doing. So the first step is putting the insulation in. We're gonna put our insulation inside this bigger cabinet. We need to cut it all up into size with user scissors. Once we've done that, we're gonna connect our cable to the bigger drivers. So we're gonna make sure our cable go in the right location. And then once we've done that, we're gonna screw our speaker driver down. So use screws and um, secure them. So in this step, what you're gonna need is you're gonna need your insulation, your speaker drivers, your speaker cabinets that are all done, ready for every, ready for this step. So you've got your crossovers installed, you've got your terminals, you've got your port, all that jazz have been done. Because our speaker cabinets are finished, we wanna be working on something that's soft. So I've got a bit of cardboard down and then a bit of uh, carpet on top. You can do something similar, use a towel or something. Just really, yeah, keep your speakers safe. You don't want to dent them at this step. So, the insulation. We're using this because it can be a damping material inside the speaker cabinet. Pretty much every single good speaker that has a box and a port or even a seal box will have insulation in it. And the insulation, what it does is that it absorbs all the sound waves that go into the speaker cabinet. So the way I like to think of it is that as sound waves get played into the speaker cabinet, they're bouncing around and we want to absorb them um, by the damping material so that they don't come back out of the speaker cabinet and we hear it. If we do, we get a really muddy sound. And in fact, I've heard speakers before with no insulation in it. And what you hear is you hear some, you know, you hear a lot of bass, but you get a very muddy bass. And even the mid range is um, suffering. You get all those little minor instruments, you know, really small sounds in the mix. You just won't hear them. They'll just be muddied over by the reverb of the speaker box um, with the sound wave coming out. So it's really important that we use damping material. Damping material is one of those things where if you use a lot of damping material, you're gonna reduce your bass response, but you're gonna get really detailed upper bass and mid range. If you don't use any damping or use very little damping, you're gonna get very loud bass, but you're gonna get sort of muddy bass and you're also gonna get muddy mid range. So what we wanna do is we wanna find that perfect balance. And I've found that using uh, insulation just lined all over the edges or the internal sides so that you can't see any of the internal faces is the best way to do it. However, if you find that your speaker cabinets are just too bassy in your room, you might have a small room, you might have sort of, ba um, you might have bass nodes that are, are really prominent in very low frequencies. What you can do is you can add more insulation in to reduce the bass and that way you even get more clear mid range as well. So it's entirely up to you and it kind of, you know, the art and science of speaker design. You keep, you know, playing around with it until you get a sound that you really like. So when we're installing insulation, what we're gonna need is a pair of scissors. We're gonna use a pair of scissors and we're gonna use this big sheet of insulation and we're gonna cut it up to size. By the way, it's a polyester insulation. Um, it's the most common type of insulation used in speaker uh, cabinets. In the old days, they used to use stuff like rock wool and fiberglass. Rock wool and fiberglass both have amazing acoustic properties. But the problem is, is that they um, have like glass fibers and those glass fibers can go into your speaker drivers, like into the voice coil, the moving parts, clog them up and uh, that's not good. So polyester is a better alternative in terms of longevity of your speaker cabinet. This insulation is 50 mil thick. Um, you can go thinner, you can go thicker. I just recommend somewhere around 50 mil is ideal. Aside from fiberglass and rock wool, there are different types of insulations out there as well. So this is a polyester. You can get polyesters in different densities. You can even get it in different colors. Um, the color won't affect the sound and performance of it, unless, you know, it might look different, might look better, I don't know, up to you. But you can also get like reconstituted fabrics, which are really good. They're hard to get in Australia, but I believe in the US and Europe, they're used a lot in um, the speaker community. So they're great as well. One thing I would stay away from is any of that, um, foam stuff, you know, that sort of spongy foam where it's made for so-called acoustic properties, it doesn't work. Um, that plastic foam, it just, sound goes straight through it and comes straight back out. You really need to use something like a Dacron or a heavy, um, a heavy insulation, the foam too light. So I'm not gonna show you how, you know, to cut up the insulation, you know, um, to size. I think you can be able to work that out. But just to give you an idea, you want to cut panels inside that fit. Because we've got a brace in the middle of the speaker cabinet, we're gonna to have to have the side panel broken up into two insulation strips. So like one, two. Then we're gonna have one at the top of the ceiling, one at the bottom, and then two on the back panels like that. Um, we're not gonna put any on the front panel because that's where our speaker drivers are. With the porthole, we've got a hole in the back. So this piece here is gonna to have to have a hole in it that goes over the um, port. 
In terms of cutting the insulation to size, it doesn't have to be perfect, but we do want to get it so there's a bit of crush, you know, it holds itself in there. If you do want to, you can get a um, tape measure and mark it all up. You can even make a stencil on a piece of paper, cut that out and put it on top of the insulation and cut it around the stencil. And um, there's a million ways to do it. Uh, really, and you can't go wrong. Even if you cut it, you know, too small, it's fine. It's not gonna work. Just remember, the idea is that we wanna put insulation in and see as little of the speaker cabinet as possible. We want all surfaces to be covered. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my back panel. So I'm gonna make a hole that goes over the port. So what you wanna do, put your insulation down, put it roughly where the port is, make sure you um, know where it is, fold your insulation over. So you go one like that, one like that, and then cut the edge off like that. This is gonna make a hole. There we go. So now we've got a hole for our port that we can go over like that inside the speaker cabinet. And once you've done that, you're just gonna get your scissors, cut down like that. That way we can get it over the port and over the horizontal brace member. You can be real fiddly, especially if you've got you know, big hands like I do. But um, yeah, just keep pushing it down. You can even use like a something, you know, to push it down if you, you know, can't get your hand in there, but mine is nice. Um, I wish I could show you this as well with the camera, but it's just really hard to get a camera view that allows you to see inside the box and see what I'm doing. But just remember, so what you're trying to do is just cover all the surfaces with the insulation. So the side panels are all covered, the back panels and top and bottom panels are all covered. I should also mention, you want your speaker cable to be coming out of the speaker cabinet. You don't want to get them stuck behind all the insulation and have to take your insulation out to get them. So just make sure they're hanging out. In fact, get your tweeter cable to come through and pull through the tweeter hole like that. So you got it like that. That way when we install the uh, tweeter, it's ready to, you know, it's all ready to go. Now I'm gonna do some insulation on the back panel. Put some insulation down on the bottom. Now I'm gonna put two insulation pieces over the crossovers that are on the side of panels. So you're putting it like that neatly down and then another one on this side that speaker done i'm going to do my next one and once we've done that we're going to link back up and we're going to connect our cables to the speaker drivers 